Okay, go, go, the right. Life offers no guarantees, but the one thing we've learned for sure is that the time we have is indeed precious. The more time we spend with family, friends, and with nature can make the difference between living a good life and living a great one. Join us on our quest to be participants rather than observers, to learn from our mistakes, to share our successes and our failures as we spend all of the time we have chasing our dreams, fueling our passion, and fueling the fire in the great outdoors. Closed captioning for Fuel the Fire TV is brought to you by Best Tech. Hey folks, welcome back to Fuel the Fire TV. We made it, Matt. It took us six hours to get here yesterday from Manitoulin Island, but we're down in Stouffville, Ontario, and we're hunting Canada's in February. Doesn't look quite like February because it's so mild. We had a crazy rainstorm and, uh, but we made it. Valco is here, he's ready to retrieve some birds. We got six shooters, actually eight shooters today. What do you think? I think it's like spring. It reminds me of snow goose hunting, but hey, we got a nice whole water. I think it's gonna be good. I think we're gonna have a great time. This is a 10 day season. It opens today. It's foggy as heck. Yesterday was the hottest day on record in Toronto, 17 degrees, but that's all right. These birds are gonna be in the air. We can hear them. We're gonna shoot some Canada's. Stay tuned. Go, go. Watch the dog back, Valco. Great shooting, boys. Get him, Valco. Get him, Valco. Get him, Valco. <laughs> that was awesome. I didn't even pull the trigger. And uh, these guys let him have it. There was three birds come in there, and uh, these guys touched them off and got all three. Valco is doing his work, man. It's so great to have a dog, especially in this deep mud. It's a foot deep. And so he's going to be working hard today. Awesome. Thanks, Valco. Uh, local geese with the fog, the call doesn't work as much. The migrators, we uh, the northern birds, we can double clog them right until they get their feet on the ground. Um, they love noise. They love, they love it. But the local geese, when they've got something in mind, uh, it's hard. If they don't see the decoys, it's really hard to get them just with the call. So we're going to do our best with that fog. So the uh, setup seemed to be a little bit off. The birds were flaring a little bit, so the guys went out and just moved the birds in a little bit tighter, so uh, out in front of us.
awesome. <laughs> February, and we are hunting geese. How much better than that can you get? All right, there you have it, folks. What an awesome day we had today down here in Southern Ontario with Matthew Goddard and his uh, guide, Mark, here, and uh, his awesome dog, Belko. Uh, we picked up 50 geese today. It's an extended season, like I said, in Southern Ontario. We're out here fueling our passion and fueling the fire with uh, Domain Migrator. You can check out their website at the bottom of the screen. If Matt will put you on some birds in the spring and in the fall, check them out. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Fuel the Fire TV is made possible by, as well as these fine sponsors. This segment of Fuel the Fire TV is brought to you by Kickaboo Meat Seasoning. Hey man. Yes sir. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to see my old chum, Balco. That's, I love this dog. I actually got a new dog just like him. A yep. uh, little pup this year. His name's Bodie. Uh, but we're glad to be back in Ottawa. This is always an exciting part of our, of our new hunting season. Right before turkey and we get to actually start hammering some snow goose here in April. Now, we, you know, we're in a, we were here last year. We were in this field. Why, why so many decoys? What's the deal here? Well, in the spring, birds have been overly pressured in the States all winter, so to, I wouldn't hunt with less than 700 decoys. Right, and what yeah. do we got today? We got probably, looks like... A thousand. A thousand, yeah. yeah. Now, for the farmer, you know, does this help him? I mean, do these birds do a number? Some farmers are really happy to see us because uh, they pick up the root and the field is done. And they take One the day. whole seed right yeah, out of the exactly. ground. Exactly, so the farmer's got to replant all this field. It costs thousands of dollars, if right. not ten thousands of dollars. Right. So we're also here to help him get the geese away from this field. Right, now typically with the sun behind us, um, or actually in front of us, it's, it's harder to to actually get these birds in the morning hunt. Yeah. But uh, we should be able to get some vortexes hopefully oh, this morning. Always do, yeah. always do. Awesome. <laughs> First shoot of the day, we got a banded bird. Hey, really? it's a good, good way man. to start the day. Not bad at all. Good start to the hunt so far. Yeah, banded bird. We got one yesterday too. Yo. Any blues this year? Yeah, we got a few blues this year. Uh, we've, been, we've been averaging about two blues a day. Oh, nice. not, not many though. Starting to see a lot more juvenile too. <laughs> Gorgeous. I'm so happy we got those. Tell me you got that. It's really nice, yeah. mature blue geese. Beautiful bird. Extremely, extremely rare to get them. It's about one in a thousand. It's a good start of the day. You know what? We're out snow hunt with Fuel the Fire TV today. We just shot ourselves a blue for the first time, which is a cross between a Ross and uh, and a blue goose. Okay, so here's how you can tell the difference between a, uh, a blue and a Ross goose. A Ross goose has a very short beak, lots of warts and stuff in it, very, very tiny, all right? Whereas a regular snow goose or a blue goose has a longer elongated beak. So there's your differences right there. Um, <laughs> Just unbelievable. Like we're definitely gonna get this thing mounted for the wall. This is a first. You know, that was a great hunt this morning. It all worked out. We had the wind in our favor and uh, we had just enough cloud cover 
to get that, uh, to get those shots, those kill shots for you. We're going to uh, get ready here. We're going to clean up some of these birds and then we're going to come back for the afternoon hunt and uh, see if we can get some of those big vortexes that this place is famous for. All right, I'm here with Ray Vickers. He's one of our sponsors for the show and he runs kickabooshop.com. They're a meat seasoning company here in Ontario and they make a fantastic product. Jerky juice, meat juice, marinade. You got a bunch of spices. Yeah, sausage spices. Sausage spices and that's what we're gonna talk about today. He's gonna walk us through how he cleans his geese uh, and he, he has a special little secret there about what he does with his goose legs and what's that? Yeah, so I take all the goose legs and we basically turn it all into sausage. That's where you're gonna find a lot of the sweeter fat on a, on a goose, Canada or a snow. Um, this will be my first attempt with snows, but uh, with Canada geese, there's lots of good fat there and sweetens up your sausage a little bit. Okay, so with the leg, um, this bird has its breast gone, obviously. So you can see right here where the fat is. And I just take my knife and I just cut right down towards the knuckle on the, on the leg. And a lot of times I just take my knife and push. So I'll just push here on the leg a little bit just to expose. And then what I'll do is just take my thumb in here, grab a hold, and now you can see I can pull that right into the back. This is where the joint is right here. So I'll flip the bird over and then I just leave my thumb there. And now it's completely loose. Now you can see that joint. And then I just slide my knife up in here, cut right down. Just give it a little tip, and then this is where I'll hold, and then just give it a pull. Just like that. Those feathers will come off, and you're left with a full leg. And you always make sure you take the legs, and why is that? I always take the legs. The, uh, the leg meat is actually some of the sweetest meat. It has the nicer fat on it. Works really, really nice when you're cooking it up. Uh, that extra fat works really well in sausage. When you get your geese, you probably get an extra I don't know, a half a pound per, per goose. You make sure you get an extra little bit of meat, which is always good, right? Always good, especially yeah. when you're making sausage. It's our second morning back in the blind, and it's already turned out to be an awesome morning. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. This segment of Fuel the Fire TV is brought to you by La Chance Fields to Stream. All right, folks, welcome to the program. We're here at the rendezvous point in Ottawa, and we're waiting for our guide, Matthew Goddard from Domain Migrator, and his pro staff, Claude Lachance, uh, from Lachance Field Streams. And this is what happens when you're snow goose hunting in April. You come to the rendezvous point, they've got a thousand decoys set up, and they know where these birds are. They, they pick them off between the roost and their flyway, and we're hoping this morning to see some, some vortexes, they call them, and that's when these birds come in and these snows just kind of circle and circle and circle all the way down until they come into killing range. <laughs> Wasn't that a show, guys? Wow! Wow! Hey folks, Claude Lachance of Lachance Fields to Stream. Uh, and I've been waterfowling since I was 16 years of age for over 30 years now. But since 2010, I started up my business where I wanted to provide waterfowlers with product for my local area. So as mentioned, I have my Greater Goose Call here, my Fowl Tongue Series. This call here has been bored tight. Um, it has a couple O-rings inside that hold, it holds the air from passing through the working parts of the call and also holds the call pieces together. Basically, when I'm working uh, with, with the snows, I like to, when I first see them, use my little lesser call to get their attention when they're really far. So I might do something like this. It's a higher pitch call to get their attention. Once they see it, they've turned, I switch to my greater goose call and I start to get a little deeper and a little softer with them in order to finish them and have them lock their wings and work their way into our, our location. <laughs> Snow geese, they like to do a lot of murmurs and, and uh, barking, but mainly I stick to feeding murmurs and it sounds like this right here. When they're coming in and I want to finish them, it's what I do. 
You know, just little soft things like that. It seems to work it in. It's made all the difference for us out here this spring so far. Give that a shot out there in the field. This product's available. You can reach me on Facebook under my personal page of Claude Lachance, or I have a fan page, Lachance Fields the Stream. Reach out to me there, and I, I, I'll instant, uh, instantly message you, and we'll get the product into your hands. These guys are, uh, these birds are out there far, though, and it's important. We're using uh, three and a half inch um, double B. You, you really gotta reach out, though, and try and touch these birds from, you know, 50, 60 yard shots. So, you know, and it's the beginning of the season, really, because we haven't been bird hunting since, you know, the later part of November. So, uh, people are a little bit rusty. snow geese in April you have to call Matt and Claude they put on a great show for us we saw some crazy vortexes tonight and uh, we, we hammered some birds these guys did a great job of shooting the dogs learning their business and learning their trade did also a great job on the retrieve remember folks to fuel your passion and fuel the fire you got to get outdoors This segment of Fuel the Fire TV is brought to you by Pro Gas. I'm here with Danny from uh, Longbeard Guiding Service. He's a partner with Sean, and uh, we're scouting the openers tomorrow. Now the weather is kind of, you know, it's not cooperating. Uh, so what are you thinking? Well, I think they're just in the bush right now. I'm sure if we keep looking around tonight, we'll end up finding them. Now, if it's uh, if it's ugly tomorrow with the camera, are you gonna put me in a in a blind or what do you got? Yeah, that? probably put you in a blind against a cedar tree. We're continuing our Ottawa adventure, and I'm with Longbeard Guiding Service, Sean Desermo. Yeah. And uh, Sean, this is this is his first year guiding uh, his business. His first year, you took some people out for free last year. Yeah, me and my buddy, uh, my partner Danny, uh, we, we did it and uh, we uh, we did really well, man. Like 16 people we took out, we got 15 birds. Awesome. So I uh, said, you know what, man, It's uh, I, I also work for Domin uh, Migratar there, yeah. Matt, Matthew Goodar. Yeah. And uh, so I've been guiding 15 years, but uh, the turkey, there's there was nobody around here doing it and uh, we got a lot of really good exclusive permission, so. It's always fun being out in the turkey oh, woods. Oh my God, man. And then uh, this afternoon, uh, you talked me into a spot and stock. That's and, right. And we it was went, epic. Yeah, we had a spot and stock, and there was uh, a couple of hens sniffing oh, on Sean's ear there. Oh my God, it was, uh, my heart was going like it was a monster buck in front of me. Awesome. Well, I'm excited. You know, you, if, and I always say this, and I, I know it might be a, a broken record, but um, for, for those of, of, of us that haven't tried turkey hunting, you are missing oh, out. You gotta get out there. Yeah, it is just, it is so exciting. And I know it doesn't, you don't think that at first. I didn't think that for a long time, but it, it absolutely is a blast. And, and hopefully tonight is no different. Oh God, I hope so. We're working some birds and they're behind us maybe. What do you think? A hundred yards at least. Yeah. And it looks like they're, or it sounds like they're gonna in the bottom of this gravel pit down there. And uh, hopefully they're gonna walk right up here to the roost, hopefully to our left, but it sounds like they're more this way. Yeah. Yeah, they're that way, they're there.
the yeah, double man. closet. Yes, 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 yes. We got a double now. As soon as that trigger went, the oh. bird went off camera, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're and so I had to wait. But yeah, you know yeah, what? Yeah. He stopped right there. We both we hammered them both to bed. And they were there forever. I, I was know. just like. I know, I know. They came right beside the tent. They were five feet from us, man. Yeah, it was epic. My, I got, I, my God, man. I'm on 10. Oh, it was epic. epic that was epic. awesome. Oh, man, I was so close to not getting this birch on. Look at that. Nice paintbrush on him. That is awesome. Yeah, Buddy, That's thanks, man. Amazing, man. That is awesome. And we're down here in the second phase of our Ottawa trip. Friends with Matt, uh, guiding with Longbeard uh, guide service. Guide service. Yeah. And uh, we just laid the smack down on two monster toms. Look, it's hold up that fan. Yeah, yeah. Man. This is awesome. My first double. And I can't thank you enough. Oh, Longbeard Guiding Service. Thank you. Man, Appreciate that was it, man. awesome, folks. You gotta try it. If you're ever in this area, you gotta look up Sean and uh, and give him a call in turkey season because yeah. he's gonna put you on birds. And uh, you never know, maybe you guys are gonna be the ones that get the double. Remember, folks, to fuel your passion and fuel the fire, you gotta get outdoors.